please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot kill. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. 
for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. God, rich in mercy, you look with compassion on this troubled world. Feed us with your grace and grant us the treasure that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. reading from Amos. Alas for those who are at ease in Zion and for those who feel secure on Mount Sa Samurai. Alas for those who lie on beds of ivory and lounge on their couches and eat lambs from the flock and calves from the stall, who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp and like David improvise on instruments of music, who drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, they shall now be the first to go into exile, and the reverie of the loungers shall pass away. The word of the Lord. We will read responsibly Psalm 146. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, O my soul. Put not your trust in rulers, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When they read their past, they return to earth, and in that day their lost perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed, and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall remain forever. The God of Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. A reading from 1 Timothy. Of course, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, 
Some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, it is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. The word of the Lord. Again today, we have um, a theme going on about, about where is your focus? 
Does that make any sense to you? Where is your focus? I know, right? So, I brought these handy dandy binoculars for you. They are so fabulous. Have you used these fancy binoculars before? You haven't? Well, let me just show you. The way you use these fancy binoculars is you hold them up to your eyes and then you can look through them. Okay? Isn't that cool? I know, right? I want you to try something. Try something. Try standing up. And, and I want you to see if you can walk around and how much you see when you walk around. Just be kind of careful. Don't fall off the step. Yeah. Can't see a whole lot, can you? No. Um, okay, put them up to your eyes and kind of look my way. And then I want you to um, tell me what you see. I know, right? So, so can you see anything besides the monkey right now? Yeah. No. What else? Can, what else can you see? You can see the microphone, right? But you can't see a whole lot more, right? Okay. Um, okay. Let's try it again. You might like this. Ooh, which one? A hundred thousand. Can you see much more than the money? You can see the microphone too. Yeah, I know. You can't see much more than the money and and a few other things. All right, let's try. Hey, put those back up. You can't look. You can't look. Okay. What about this? What does it have on it? Our church. Can you see much more than that? Oh, ho, 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 tricky. Uh huh. You can see Adeline. So um, when you've got these up to your eyes, it's just kind of hard to see much more than um, much more than what you're directly looking at, right? So the rich man in our story with Jesus, um, he he didn't even see the guy who was laying at his gate because see he had a house and he had a gate outside his house, and that guy laid there all the time and he really needed help, but the rich man was walking around like this and he never even saw the guy right go ahead put your, put your, uh -huh. if you walk around you can't see what's down by your feet without going like this right can you do it I know right so the rich guy he was so focused on what he was doing he didn't even see Lazarus he didn't even see him you know what Jesus is trying to tell us Put your goggles on. Put your binos up. Put your. Oh. So, what do you see now? A cross. Yeah, this is a fancy cross. Yeah. Jesus wants us to focus on what? What do you think Jesus wants us to focus on? The cross. And the cross is a symbol for focusing on what? What Jesus teaches us for God, focusing on God. Here I've got, I think Jesus wants us to see like Jesus sees. Jesus looks out with eyes of love, right? This is a completely different looking Jesus, isn't it? This kind of Jesus... Looks more like the people where Jesus lived. That's that's what the people around where Jesus lived. They look more like that. Are you surprised? That's what they think. They think Jesus looked like that. And so if Jesus is looking at you with eyes of love, he's looking like that, right? So I brought this. So that you could do what Jesus is doing. Could look with eyes of love. If I look at eyes of, with eyes of love at you, okay, you look at people and you look with love so that you can see is there anything, is there anything that the people that you see, and you can see even the ones that are down by your feet, right? If anyone was down by your feet, you can see them. You can look at with eyes of love and you can say, 
How can I love that person today? Because that's what the rich man really needed to do. He really needed to take off these and put on these. His eyes of love. He say, how can I love that person today? Make sense? Yeah? All right. Shall we pray? Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you, Thank you for teaching us, for teaching us to, look at other people to look at other people with eyes of love. With eyes of love. Help, us to see help us to see how we can help other people. How we can help other people. Amen. Now, you can keep your binoculars forever if you want, or you can put them there so you have your hands. Okay, right there is fine. You don't want your eyes of love? Okay. It's all right, Alice. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> have a good week. Thanks. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for bringing us all here to this house of worship today, that we may focus on you, that we may remember that you ask us to look with eyes of love the way you look at us. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you. Amen. The psalm we read for today, where to place trust? Where can we place our trust wholeheartedly? Should we trust in princes and rulers? I remember back when I came here to Zion, I, I was a little bit of a mess back then. Um, at least internally, because I had, um, I had a lot of questions. I was very off kilter. Um, the one person that I thought I could trust, and I put so much trust in, um, had betrayed me. And I, that relationship broke down, and it was gone. And I was, I was flailing about internally about where do you put your trust when... The places you think you can trust didn't work out. It was a very hard time for me. Where do I place my trust? Do I place my trust in family or a politician or a doctor or a country? Or do I just keep my trust placed in myself? Have you ever been really let down? Let down by a politician, let down by a doctor, let down by your country, let down by your family, let down by somebody that you really trusted. Have you ever let yourself down? Through it all, I've always been thankful for family and my doctor and my country. I've, I'm learning to trust myself. I, I spent a lot of time working on that. Um, I'm still not so keen on politicians. <laughs> Our psalm today advises us, do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. It's easy to put trust in people we can see and hear and talk to. We put our trust in people who we can watch and hold accountable. And if we have to, we can set them straight. But in the end, spouses, politicians, doctors, family members, leaders, and even princes, they're all still people. They're all still human. And human people, oh my goodness, we can make mistakes, can't we? We can mess up. We can hurt other people. Sometimes we do it without meaning to. Sometimes people are intentionally hurtful and sometimes intentionally destructive. But in the end, if we put all our trust in people or a person, we will be let down. We will discover they are no help. 
Happy are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever. Our psalm reminds us, happy are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. We know that's where we put our trust. In the end, that's where our trust belongs, yes? We know that's where we put our ultimate hope. In the end, that's where our hope is, yes? But sometimes it's hard to actually see and hear and hold on to that. God is this big, huge, amazing idea, the creator of heaven and earth, the sea, and all that's in them. That's so huge. Who am I that God would take notice of me? Maybe God doesn't notice me because my heart has been broken every once in a while and your hearts have been broken so badly and maybe God just didn't notice. With all that big, huge, amazing stuff that God has going on, how could he notice little me? Could it be? Yes. God notices every single one of us. God notices exactly what's going on. Even though God has so many big, huge, amazing things going on, God notices. God notices that Jane is in the hospital. God notices that last year we had so many folks in our congregation who died. God notices each and every one of us. It is God who brings justice and healing. It is God who watches over strangers and orphans and widows. It is God who watches over strangers and orphans and widows. And so for centuries, for centuries at funerals, people have reminded ourselves who we belong to. One of my favorite um, funeral, funeral um, scriptures is from Romans, that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And for centuries at funerals, we Christians have covered caskets with this thing called a pall, a P-A-L-L. The word comes from the Latin word meaning cloak. When this casket enters the church, the pall is placed over it as a sign of the new creation we have become at baptism. Because God notices each of us. It's a visible reminder about where we place our trust and to whom we belong and who notices us. It is a visible reminder that nothing can separate us from the triune God because we are claimed in the waters of baptism by the cross of Jesus Christ. So all of that said, where do you place your ultimate trust? To whom do you sing your praises? The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the triune God, sustain you in your trust and singing God's praises and keeping you in grace and faith. Because yes, indeed, God notices you, God loves you, God forgives you. Amen.
faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained and nurtured by our generous God, we gather as one to pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Watch over the church, O God, so that we place your good news above all worldly gain. Deliver us from the temptations of comfort and complacency. Lord, in your mercy, watch over your creation especially the life-giving water that sustains us. Heal oceans, rivers, and lakes around the world. Where drought and flood and other natural disasters make turmoil of our settled ways, give strength for healing and rebuilding in affected communities. Lord, in your mercy, watch over the nations. Lead us away from fear and hatred. Show us instead how to welcome the stranger, give shelter to those fleeing violence, and provide food to those who are impoverished. Watch over all nations dealing with war or political upheaval. Lead leaders so that they may pursue justice and peace and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, watch over those in any need. Have mercy on those who are grieving, suffering, lost, lonely, oppressed, underemployed, and imprisoned. We pray especially for those we've named on our prayer list and for Nancy Broadman, Nate Moore, Larry Steely, and Mary Ann. We pray for the, for the family and friends who are grieving the loss of Rick Rulin and Linda Linton. And we pray for those whom we now name silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, watch over all caregivers. Give strength to those who attend to relatives, serve the sick, minister to prisoners, and bring food or communion to the homebound. May they bring joy to those they visit. Lord, in your mercy, we give you thanks for the saints and their models of faithful living. Give us hope as we look forward to the day when we will join them in your eternal presence. Lord, in your mercy, assured by your promise to hear us, we lay our prayers before your throne of grace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please exchange that peace with one another.
Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.